हेलो गाइस होप यू आर ऑल ओके यू आर ऑल एंजॉइंग योर लाइफ एंड यू आर आल्सो वाचिंग माय वीडियोस वेलकम बैक टू डॉक्टर अरशद नदीम अवान अल्ट्रासाउंड टीचिंग वीडियोस आई डू होप दैट एवरीथिंग वुड बी ऑल राइट ऑन योर पार्ट आई एम आल्सो ओके एंड आई एम आल्सो एंजॉइंग एक्चुअली आई एम रियली एंजॉइंग अपलोडिंग वीडियोस बिकॉज थ्रू दिस वे आई एम लर्निंग दिस इज एक्चुअली अ रिसिप्रोकल एक्टिविटी i teach for the purpose of the learning so basically i am learning here and it's really very enjoyable it's rather i would say therapeutic and the second thing is uh, it also helps my colleague in the med medical professions uh, to benefit the community at large today my topic of discussion is uh, inguinal hernia hernia is, has been really difficult uh, for many of the clinician uh, whenever there is a question of uh, writing down the direct hernia and indirect hernia or spigelian hernia or femoral hernia ones get confused so don't be confused today this lecture will include all the information so for the inguinal region is concerned it is actually a ilio inguinal crease where the abdomen uh, separates from the thighs or where abdomen meet the uh, thigh region that exact area is considered to be a inguinal area Uh, for that inguinal area there are uh, multiple hernias normally there are two hernia which is truly inguinal hernia that are direct inguinal hernia and indirect inguinal hernia so far the spigelian hernia and femoral hernia are concerned these are quite close to the inguinal area that's why it is also included in the inguinal hernia beside this you can also look for the paraumbilical hernia or umbilical hernia or uh in the different other areas as well so in this lecture today i will include that uh, how we will perform the different maneuver what are the criteria for that second thing what are the technical considerations for the inguinal hernia or the identification of the hernia second how we will write and what is needed to be uh, uh, written on the uh, ultrasound report so far this maneuvers are concerned how many maneuver we can perform and which type of a maneuver is uh, applicable on a certain inguinal hernia what are uh, maybe the contents of the hernia these are all very important information through this you will be able to give a clear idea and, and uh, information regarding the abdominal hernias especially uh, inguinal hernia so i will include i will try to include all of the information regarding the hernia so let's start watching i will take you step by step towards all these process and uh, hopefully you will enjoy this lesson so let's start watching my video this is the diagram of the anterior abdominal wall and it uh, depicting the sides of the abdominal wall hernia look at towards the one this one is uh, denoting for supra umbilical hernia this is the area where the supra umbilical uh, th this is called as a supra umbilical region for the hernia uh, number 2 uh, this is exactly the umbilical hernia where the umbilicus is locating so if uh, the hernial content comes out of the umbilicus so this would be called as umbilical hernia and uh, the three is termed as infra umbilical hernia normally for the supra and infra these uh, both are combinedly term used which is called as para umbilical hernia but para umbilical hernia is a bit quite confusing you are not sure whether para umbilical is of supra umbilical type or infra umbilical type if you want to be more concise just mention supra umbilical hernia or infra umbilical hernia look for the fourth the fourth is the area where most commonly spigelian hernia occurs so this is the area for the spigelian hernia and uh, number fifth is for the erect inguinal hernia that is the area where the erect inguinal hernia ensues the sixth is indicating the indirect inguinal hernia that is the place where the indirect hernia usually occurs and the seventh is the femoral hernia so these are the sites for the hem, uh, hernia and this is the diagram explaining very beautifully the exact size for all these hernias
Keeping the technical considerations and technical requirement in view, a high frequency transducer that uh, could be more than 12 mega hazards with 50 millimeter long transducer is optimal in the majority of the cases. Uh, when the patient is obese, so in obese patient a lower frequency transducer may be necessary usually ranging from 7 to 9 megahertz curved array. A uh, use of 50 uh, mm transducer is important because of the fact because it has a larger uh, field of view and it allows better identification of the landmarks especially when the patient is in uh, having diastasis of aponeurosis. Uh, when long footprint uh, linear transducer are not available, use a trapezoidal or virtual convex display can be very helpful. So these are the commonest consideration while you are looking for the uh, groin hernia. So try to use a uh, biggest footprint 50 mm long transducer with a, a high resolution of 12 mega hazards and if the patient is obese so then use 7 to 9 mega hazards curve array as well. So these two are very important while you are doing a uh, groin hernia. It is important to use correct terminology in reporting the results of a dynamic groin ultrasound examination. In addition to the indication, the report should contain the following elements. So on the top, it should have the examination name, which type of examination is going to be performed. And the second is the specific dynamic components of the examinations. What you are going to apply so far, the dynamic components are concerned. On the third, the, the side uh, examination. For example, you have to look for the side of examination, which side you are going to perform mean whether it is right side or it is left side always mention majority or majority of the time uh, in majority cases I would rather say there uh, there would be a either typo mistakes or sometimes they forget to write about the right and left so it causes lot of confusion so be careful whatever the side you are examining must mention it is the right or is the left presence or absence of a hernia you have to include then whether you did find the hernia or there is no hernia Beside this, you also mentioned the hernia size. We usually ignore that. We straight away jump into there is a hernia and this is blah, blah, blah. And we didn't mention even didn't bother to mention what the size of the hernia is and especially what the neck of the hernia is. On the sixth, uh, you have to look for the hernial contents like is it omental sac or there is any bowel loops or there is any fluid in it or if there is two or fro movements of the bowel or whatever you did find you must have to mention that thing because the hernial contents should have been on your report. So for the seventh is concerned reducibility of the hernia whether it is reducible or it is not reducible these both are very important points. Uh, in, in eight you have to whether the hernia is tender or non-tender like uh, it will uh, help you to identify whether there is some inflammatory processes going on or not whether the patient is symptomatic or not. So therefore, you must look for whether there is tenderness or not. Hernias are composed of a sac, the parts of which are described as the neck, uh, the body and fundus. Uh, these are uh, all the parts of the herniatic sac and uh, it may contain herniatic contents. The inguinal hernial sac consists of uh, mainly peritoneum which protrudes through the abdominal defect or you can call it hernial orifice as well and it envelops the internal uh, herniatic contents. Whatever is herniated it will be um, enveloped by the peritoneum. The neck of the sac is situated at the defect and it uh, is very important because uh, hernia with a narrow or rigid neck are most likely to obstruct on and strangulate and causes strangulation hernia. The body is the widest part of the herniatic set and the fundus is usually the farthest portion and this would be away from the defect. 
uh, which are most likely to enter uh, herniatic sacs are those normally situated in the region of the defect. Uh, suppose this could be either mobile, for example, the omentum and uh, quite often small bowel. Uh, sonographically, hernia do not contact uh, contain I uh, mean bowel, uh, but to some extent you can easily see these bowel as well. In most hernia, uh, only they will be fat. So this fat either may be intraperitoneal fat, uh, like maybe mesenteric fat or omental fat or sometime it may be preperitoneal fat or maybe you can appreciate the both uh, in the herniatic sac. Hernia that contain intraperitoneal fat may contain bowel loops later and there will be a greater risk of strangulation. In some hernia there may be a free fluid uh, intraperitoneal uh, that would be from the intraperitoneal origin. Uh, hernia that contain bowel are considered a high risk because of the strangulation which may further lead to infarction of the bowel. Uh, so far the large hernia is concerned normally it can be easily detected clinically but ultrasound is required to just look for the neck, the rigidity of the neck, the contents of the herniatic sac and also look for the inflammatory process whether there is inflammation or not or there is any purative or purulent uh, contents within the herniatic sac. Look at to this uh, high resolution ultrasound scanning and on this ultrasound scanning you can appreciate fluid containing incarcerated direct inguinal hernia. In a long axis uh, image of a fluid containing femoral hernia that causes pain and swelling. So you can appreciate a few points here. The first thing is this is in the right groin area. The second thing is so far the sac uh, of the hernia is concerned. As you know it contains three components the neck, the body and the fundus. So this body contains fluid, so nothing else in there. So this is only intraperitoneal fluid migrated towards the sac. The second thing is you have to look for the neck. Neck is quite tight, narrow, but you know there is no fluid, there is no uh, bowel loops in there. So there is no chance of strangulation, but yet it is prone to infection or sometime infection may uh, cause some purulent or abnormality in here. So this is what the reason of the pain. As I mentioned earlier that femora, uh, femoral hernia is not the inguinal hernia but as it is situated within the groin region so therefore we consider it as a groin hernia. So this is a classical example of the femoral hernia with a very tight and narrow neck having fluid in it. So this is fluid filled uh, femoral hernia. Again this is a, a high resolution scan for the groin region and on that groin region you can appreciate bowel contain inguinal hernia. Uh, this is a short axis view and uh, this is a short axis view of the inguinal canal and it's showing indirect inguinal hernia that contains bowel loops. So this is what a classical example of uh, uh, indirect inguinal hernia. In the previous image, you have seen a femoral hernia, which uh, contain only fluid in that. But here, this herniatic sac containing bowel loop. So it means this is very important. So for that, you have to ask the patient for the valsalva maneuver. Here, uh, this patient was on the valsalva maneuver. And uh, during the valsalva maneuver, this uh, bowel protrudes through the small defect into the herniatic sac. And here, this bowel loop is here. So this is showing bowel loop. Uh, with the compression, you can see to and fro movements of the intestinal or the bowel contents within that. So what most important is here, you have to look, you have to take the measurement of this entire body and fundal region so that you can appreciate exact size of the hernia. Beside this, you have to look for the neck, how 
rigid and how narrow the neck is so this is another important thing is after confirming these two points the neck size and the herniatic size or the hernia size you need to put the doppler signal on and look for the surrounding vascularity so you have to look for the signs of the strangulations or not and the third thing is you have to look for the reducibility as i mentioned earlier so for the technicality of the ultrasound reporting is concerned you have to apply all that knowledge on that so press it compress it if it is uh, reducible mention that it is reducible apply the wall silver maneuver if important so ask the patient to stand up and in upright position look for the again herniated contents and reducibility and irreducibility and beside this also comments on whether it is tender or not so this is a classical example of indirect inguinal hernia this is very unique presentation and very rare findings on this image this is a trans abdominal scan and here uh, uh, the patient uh, was having a severe pain on the right inguinal region so on the right inguinal region this ultrasound was performed and you can appreciate a complex cyst in the region of the pain in the right inguinal region what actually it is it is actually a herniatic sac and within the herniatic sac you can appreciate this small intraluminal lesion that is actually appendix so this type of hernia is called as amiant hernia so amiant hernia is a very rare hernia it happens only in one person of the patients quite rare so in that case what happens is the in the the hernia the appendix uh, protrude within the herniatic sac so this is called as amiant hernia which is very uh, i mean very classical however you may not be able to find that you will label it as a complex cystic lesion with having an intramural nodule and sometime you will having the vascularity in that so you will lead your finding will lead to some other areas but this uh, uh, would be confirmed on either the ct scan or the best mortality is mri so mri will be a very helpful tool in that case to confirm the amiant hernia so let look for the uh, mri image for the confirmation of amiant hernia have a look this is a classical coronal mr image and on this mr image the white arrow indicating a uh, well defined uh, tubular extension down into the herniatic sac so this is what amiant hernia is an amiant hernia can be easily picked on the mr imaging however the ultrasound imaging would be a bit confusing you may not be able to even make a head or tail of it but uh, uh, this is what the classical examination is if you have seen once this image and if you come across clinically such conditions so you must be thinking that this might be an amiant hernia or even in your differential you might put amiant hernia as well and the second thing is uh, after that you must look for the mr examination advise mri to confirm the amiant hernia so this is what the beautiful examples on the ultrasound and the mri images for the amiant hernia this is again a high resolution scan for the groin region to show you indirect inguinal hernia on uh, respiration and on well silver maneuver so you have to ask to have the quiet respiration look for, for this image on this image you can appreciate that uh, there is uh, mm, hernia during the quiet respiration this arrow is indicating there is a arrow that uh, it shows small splitting of the fat contents within the hernial sac but this is on the quiet respiration so this is again a uh, indirect inguinal hernia so it needs to have the valsalva maneuver applied so after the valsalva maneuver application you will find out that the sac would get enlarged and the contents of the hernia would be more uh, forcefully entering into the 
um, in, into the herniatic canal uh, that would be in a horizontal direction so this image actually showing you the horizontal canal um, indirect hernia having the fat contents in it and this is indirect hernia so look for the same case with the valsalva maneuver this examination is for the same patient and that is a long axis view of having a fat containing indirect inguinal hernia and this is during the valsalva maneuver look at the size it has been increased because of the respiration and due to the uh, valsalva maneuver when you apply the valsalva maneuver as a result forcefully this fat is entering into the herniatic canal and here the case is so you can well appreciate and you can make the difference between the both so the quiet respiration images will show you that the herniatic sac is not that much dilated while on the valsalva maneuver you can easily pick that the canal has been dilated and the herniatic content has been pushed forcefully within the herniatic sac for the better understanding another view has been taken on sagittal images these are the sagittal images high resolution images of the groin area which is explaining uh, the indirect inguinal hernia uh, with quite respiration so this is the image which is uh, visible to you here you can appreciate that uh, very slight fatty contents are there with a small fluid around but that is uh, indirect inguinal hernia and that is with the quiet respiration the same patient with the valsalva maneuver here you can feel the difference these white arrows are indicating that uh, bulging of the fatty contents within the herniatic sac is visible this is a sagittal view and uh, previously uh, you have seen the uh, i mean longitudinal view but here this is on the sagittal view and the herniatic contents can be easily seen it is enlarged because of the valsalva effect during the valsalva these fats are pushed towards the herniatic sac so this is a clear example of the indirect hernia and you have seen two cases both are indicating uh, whilst, uh, both are indicating uh, indirect hernia and both uh, you have seen on quiet respiration and on well selva maneuver so this is what the difference between applying the maneuvers and dynamic application for the detections of the inguinal hernias hernia reducibility related to shape relatively width of the neck and the fundus look at this hernia and this shows typical hernial shape this is direct inguinal hernia shows a wide neck uh, this white arrows down it is indicating the wide neck in comparison to the fundus the top is a fundus here down you can appreciate the image as well so uh, this is the wide neck with a wide fundus this hernia shape correlates with complete reducibility so this would be a complete reducible because of the fact it has a bigger neck and the, uh, the hernial, hernial content will easily get back to its own shape so this is a classical shape of the reducible hernia so here you can appreciate that the neck would be a much much greater than the size of the fundus or even the similar but in short word we would say here that the neck would be a greater neck so that would be a reducible hernia as i mentioned earlier that the hernia reducibility related to its shape relatively wet of the neck and the fundus look at this image and on this image uh, this shows linea alba hernia shows a very narrow neck in comparison to the fundus width look at the fundus width and look at the neck so this hernia shape correlates with non reducibility this type of a hernia would be non -reduci reducible and there will be increased risk of strangulation so uh, so beautifully it explains like you can appreciate the neck neck is very narrow so for the fundus is concerned fender width is much much greater so it's mean this is most of the time is irreducible this is non reducible and there would be a great chance of 
strangulation so that's why you have to measure the exact hernia and then after measure the size of the neck and then comment on that whether it is reducible or not reducible many a time if it is small one so it would likely be reducible and you can just push it back and when ask the patient to do the valsalva maneuver it will pop out and in case of uh, quiet respiration it will goes back but this is a classical example to show you that this is uh, with a white neck and with a small neck For the identification of the inguinal hernia, there are some key anatomically landmark which needed to be identified and uh, identification of the internal inguinal ring and inferior epigastric arteries are very important. So here look at to this image number one. It was obtained in a transverse plane and uh, it is half about halfway between the umbilical and the pubic symphysis. The inferior epigastric artery and its pair veins lies along the mid lateral posterior surface of the rectus abdominis muscle. So this is you have to keep this landmark in view. Look for the image too. It was obtained several centimeter inferior and the inferior epigastric veins lies more laterally. Now look to the image number three. It was obtained at a level where the inferior epigastric veins uh, arrowhead is showing lie at the edge of the rectus muscles this is the level at which most pagelian hernia occurs once the origin of the inferior epigastric artery is identified the transducer should be rotated into plans that are parallel so that is the anatomy you have to keep in your mind that is inferior epigastric vessels uh, and more landmarks for the evolution of the inguinal hernia. So identify the internal inguinal ring and inferior epigastric artery and veins. These are the important landmark for the identification of the direct, indirect and spagellian uh, hernias. The most important uh, classical teaching point with respect to indirect inguinal hernias are these most common groin hernias that extend in, into the scrotum or labia majora in female is almost always be due to indirect hernia. Quite often when you see that the scrotum is uh, been filled with intestinal contents or omentum especially in male and in female the labia majora will protrude outward and it will be filling with the uh, mental fats uh, that would be indirect inguinal hernia that should be always kept in mind so that would be labeled as an indirect inguinal hernia key learning point for the direct inguinal hernia is that direct inguinal hernia will be associated with increased abdominal pressure whether it is because of the ascites or obesity or pregnancy especially in older age and especially when there is weakness of the musculature so you must think of direct inguinal hernia So far the classic point for the spagellian hernia is concerned, sonography shows a complex mass within the anterior lateral aspect of the abdominal wall which may contain fluid or gas filled loops of bowel. So that would be especially on the abdominal wall anterior lateral aspect. So that would be a spagellian hernia always. Sometimes it will look like a complex mass, but actually this would be a spagellian hernia. Points uh, for the femoral hernia is this type of a hernia has a relatively high association with incarcerations. 
because of small neck because of the narrow neck there is likely possibility of strangulation this would be quite painful and this would be most of the time irreducible so that is the distinguishable feature between the femoral and spagellian direct and indirect hernia these were the basic important classical teaching points which you must keep in your mind while you are scanning this is a computerized uh, tomographic uh, image for the understanding of all these hernia the diagram is showing some lines and diagrams also showing some vasculature so here that is a black line and in the black line these are the inferior epigastric vessels so you can see these both are the inferior epigastric vessels so towards the lateral side outside so you can see there would be a spigillian hernia and indirect inguinal hernia so these two are the very classical example medial to that uh, both uh, inferior epigastric vessels there is a conjoint tendon so that is the place where the direct inguinal hernia occurs these three are the area where you can differentiate between the internal inguinal the uh, direct inguinal and indirect inguinal beside this the spigillian hernia that is quite clear here so just on the top of it uh, uh, indicated by the black arrow that is a semilunar line so this semilunar line just beneath the semilunar nile that space is for the spigillian hernia look for the downward which is a femoral canal and that femoral canal is for the femoral hernia look to the end this is the groin region where the ilio inguinal crease are so if you keep this landmark in your mind while doing either ultrasound or uh, you are assessing any ct scan so always look for the inferior epigastric vessels so laterally towards the inferior epigastric vessels there will be indirect inguinal hernia and there will be an medially to the inferior epigastric vessel this would be a direct inguinal hernia as far as spagellian is concerned it is quite easy to understand and so for the femoral is concerned you can just look for the femoral canal and you will be able to identify the femoral hernia this is another diagram to uh, for the understanding of the indirect inguinal hernia here a diagram of the deep aspect of the anterior abdominal wall showing a left indirect inguinal hernia the hernia sac protrudes through the internal inguinal ring located lateral to the epigastric vessel so look at this is uh, situated lateral to the epigastric vessel which i mentioned in the previous image that the indirect inguinal hernia would be lateral to the epigastric vessels so for the medial is concerned the medial would be for the direct inguinal hernia look at to this diagram and then we will show you on the ultrasound imaging here it's showing the inferior epigastric artery it's also showing internal inguinal ring and which is extending and showing inguinal ring and inguinal canal the long axis of the inguinal canal this is the right internal inguinal ring and right internal inguinal canal so now look for the uh, ultrasound images here it is the ultrasound image and here you can appreciate clearly iea is a uh, internal uh, epigastric artery then towards the right it is internal inguinal ring and look for the direct this is in in inguinal canal so if you target the landmark as an internal epigastric artery you will be able to uh, identify the inguinal ring and also the inguinal canal on this uh, image and ultrasound imaging uh, it is a beautiful explanation for the sliding type and non sliding type or it is reducible or irreducible look to the top a that is a reducible here you can appreciate the long arrow white arrow are indicating the neck while the arrow heads are indicating the canal or fundus so the fundus is greater than the uh, i mean the fundus and the neck are both with the same size so it's mean all of the contents from this canal can easily be go back 
and that would be called as a sliding uh, hernia or it would be called as a reducible hernia this round dot is showing small dotted is indicating the internal epigastric artery look for the lower lowest imaging still first of all identify internal epigastric artery then look for the long arrows it's showing the neck so the neck is narrow as far as the canal is concerned indicated by the arrowheads are uh, bigger than the neck so it's mean this is irreducible hernia so here these two images are indicating you the uh, indirect inguinal hernias reducible and irreducible on these images it is shown that the direct and indirect hernia with relation to spermatic cord towards the right side look for the right imaging where the sc is a spermatic cord and hernia is below the spermatic cord that would be a direct inguinal hernia in relation to spermatic cord if spermatic cord is superior to the hernia and hernia lies inferior to the spermatic cord this would be direct inguinal hernia look for the left image here you can appreciate that the hernia is superior to spermatic cord spermatic cord is lower than the hernia so this hernia would be a indirect inguinal hernia so these both images were in relation to spermatic cord if the spermatic hernia is below the spermatic cord that would be a direct inguinal hernia and if hernia is above the spermatic cord this would be a indirect inguinal hernia look for this imaging uh, this shows a round ligament here it is a round ligament and these both arrows are indicating hernia this hernia is protruding into the herniatic canal this is indirect fat containing reducible inguinal hernia and uh, this is in relation with the round ligament this is the same patient and this hernia is also associated with the right uh, with the round ligament so with the association of the round ligament here you can appreciate the hernia but this view is in short axis the previous view was in a long axis here this is the short axis view in relation to the round ligament this is fat containing reducible indirect inguinal hernia this is another example of indirect inguinal hernia these both arrows are indicating the defect through which the fatty contents are bulging out into the inguinal canal so this is indirect fat containing reducible inguinal hernia just for better understanding again hernia in relation to the spermatic cord as i mentioned when the hernia lies superior to the spermatic cord this would be an indirect inguinal hernia in this image you can appreciate that the spermatic cord is downward and the hernia indicated by the white arrows are lying upward uh, from the spermatic cord so this is example of the uh, indirect inguinal hernia with association to spermatic cord look for another example of direct inguinal hernia with relation to spermatic cord here the spermatic cord is lying superior to the hernia and hernia is lying inferior to the spermatic cord so this is a direct inguinal hernia so we have discussed the direct and indirect inguinal hernia association with spermatic cord and also with the round ligament so this is a very classical examples for the spermatic cord relations with the inguinal hernia this is the direct inguinal hernia yes guys this was all about the hernia and i have included uh, inguinal hernia direct indirect femoral spigillian hernia and uh, i do hope that there will be no doubt left in understanding uh, inguinal hernias in case of any difficulty you just get back to me the one thing i would uh, surely say here that uh, repetition is the basis of memory and uh, some of the seniors uh, of radiology department especially they used to say that try to learn or try to look for any material for four times because it will be uh, it will retain in and it will retain in your memory so therefore it is very important to keep watching these videos if you put all the effort once it will never be forgotten it will be in your uh, in, in your memory for the lifetime 
So this was all about the hernias and hopefully this would be a very useful video for you and it, it will help you to diagnose the hernias confidently. So with some other new informative videos, we'll see each other, take great care of yourself, keep doing ultrasound practice and keep watch, watching my video. See you then. Bye-bye.